conceptual perspective. Uh, Wallace here, dropping in with a little special announcement for those who have followed me for any stretch of time you know outside of the businesses that i run like myriad business solutions the visionetics institute odyssey media group i also do a great deal of work inside of the inner city communities uh, in houston dallas and other areas uh, i'm asking now as we push a fundraiser that you support what the odyssey project is doing in the inner cities uh, especially with programs like Black Men Lead, which is a rite of passage uh, initiative, and Restoring Ghetto for, Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, which is a program focused on helping young girls, but boys as well, suffering from childhood sexual abuse, uh, rape, molestation, domestic abuse, uh, absentee fatherhood, and so many other things. Uh, the information will be in the box. Thank you. Rick here dropping in on you. Hope everybody's having a great day. My day is winding down. I'm actually sitting here chilling at the crib and uh, waiting on the food in the oven to I don't know why it won't come off. But anyway, waiting on the food in the oven. And so I decided to finally address this Master P. Romeo thing. I've been getting hit a lot for it, and I sit back and, you know, I made an initial post after seeing P's uh, initial video, um, and I've checked out uh, some of the things that Romeo has said, and people are asking for my opinion. And uh, the thing is, I know no matter what I say, that there are going to be some people on the other side of what I'm saying. Um, and the reason I'm addressing it again, not because of the celebrity thing, not because of the sensationalism, not because it's a big topic, but because it's a microcosm of an issue that I think plagues the community at a level where um, a lot of people are dealing with this in different ways. I think that we have failed in a lot of ways in the way we deal with our children. I think we have over overcompensated in many ways for things we didn't have, uh, the heavy handedness of our parents. And I think that we've created an entitled ge generation. Now I'm saying that and I'm not dismissing Romeo because there are some elements and components that I'm gonna touch on. Uh, and again, a lot of this comes from speculation because nobody knows the inner workings of complete dynamics of what goes on in that family. What I can tell you is they're both hurting. They're both grieving. I think they both love each other. Uh, Romeo is grieving a sister. P is grieving a daughter. And there's some pain there, but there's also some anger, some frustration and I think it's coming out and playing out in a way that is not healthy for either one. And it happens every day uh, across this country, across this world. Um, first and foremost, uh, P's vi uh, video is in response to Romeo basically calling him out in the public and put him in on, putting him on blast. Now, here's the thing. Uh, it's easy to use our experiences with our parents and to or our kids and draw conclusions and take sides just based off of what someone says, because somebody is not telling the truth. What I tend to believe and when I'm dealing with clients and I'm getting one side of the story is I always make the assumption that I'm getting the weighted side. We tend to tell our stories from our perspective. We tend to present ourselves as the innocent one in a situation where both people probably have culpability. So when I look at this, I have to say, unless I have concrete proof 
then I have to assume that a person is presenting their side of the story. So then I have to look at it sort of as um, a performance and behavioral specialist. Um, try to discern based on what I'm seeing and what's going on and what I do know about the relationship just by observing. Here's the thing. P is saying that he's tried to guide the career of Romeo since he's been a, an adult and he won't listen. He is has other people in his ear and they're telling him things and he's not getting the success and the success and the returns he wants and he's acting out. Romeo is saying that he hasn't been paid, his dad hasn't handled his money right, that his dad actually took money that he owed him or he should have been paying him and paid his taxes and that his dad is actually broke and he's still trying to put up a facade of the quote unquote legend or celebrity masterpiece. Um, again, I haven't seen any concrete evidence either for or against that as being true or false. What I do know is kids tend to forget the things you do for them when you don't do what they want you to do. I, at times, my kids do it to me, my adult kids, depending on what's going on and what they feel I should do for them, uh, can have a very entitled approach and mindset. Uh, my thing is, I'm going to always look out for my kids. I'm going to always be there for my kids. So if there's a time, and there have been times, uh, where my kids aren't speaking to me, my adult kids aren't speaking to me, uh, it's because I've told them the truth about something. Or they've wanted me to do something that I didn't do. Uh, I don't present myself as being a perfect father. I don't present myself as being a person who has always done everything perfectly. But I've always loved on my kids. I gave them a life better than the average kid had uh, in the sense of access to the things and a safe place to live in a nice, safe environment. I grew up in the hood, but they didn't have to. Uh, with that being said, same thing with Master P. He grew up in the hood in, 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 in NOLA. And, you know, uh, he made sure his kids didn't. Uh, nobody put P on. P hustled and got on. Uh, I think he got an insurance settlement for something that happened on uncle died or something like that. And he got the insurance money and he just took it and hustled and grinded from there. Um, and here's the thing that I look at when Romeo is talking about what P didn't do financially. What I know for a fact is there are so many opportunities that Romeo had because P invested in him and put him on. Every 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 opportunity he got from playing ball at UCLA to movies to all that stuff is because P put him on. Now, what did it cost P to put him on? Did P get a return in his investment? If we're talking business, we're talking business. So did, when, when P invests all this money in him, did he get a return in his investment? Because I guarantee you, he's not looking at that part. He's looking at the fact that I earned this money, but did the money pay back the investment in it? If you if you get a book deal, the deal is going to be set to where a certain amount is paid out in uh, royalties based on a certain thing until all expenses have been recuperated. Then the deal goes a little bit more weighted towards the Arthur than before. Again, I don't know the structured deal, so I don't know how much of a violation we're talking about. Now, if P.O.'s the man, P.O.'s the man. Um, and the thing is, we don't know that. But what I can tell you is that we have a, a, a dilemma between generations in my generation, which P is in, where we I think overcorrected for the way we were, were reared and what we went through and the fact that we had access 
to more resources financially than our parents had for us. And so we did it a certain way. Now, what I can tell you is our generation, for the most part, and there's always exceptions, but our generation, for the most part, I would never uh, do my grandfather the way he's doing him, no matter what my grandfather did to me. Now, my grandfather never wronged me in a way like me and my grandfather, I think, uh, after I became an adult, me and my grandfather had one disagreement. And my response to it was, obviously you're upset. We don't agree. I love you. I'm going to go home and we'll come. I'll come back tomorrow and we'll, we'll take off from there. I came back. We didn't even talk about it anymore. We just moved on. It wasn't any angry words exchange. He said something that he thought I should have done. Uh, and it was real simple. I think I came over and that was some stuff going on with construction where he was having the garage redone and he was paying one of the guys in the neighborhood that was a little older than I was growing up that still lived with his mom was having a hard time. He was paying him to clean it up. Well, I had my younger brother with me. I said, okay. And you know, he told me what was going on. And so we said, okay, we finna head to the park, play some basketball, you know, I'm back in the hood, gonna go play some basketball with some of the guys I knew. We came back and my, I turned on the TV, was going to watch some Monday night football. I never will forget it. And he said, turn the TV off. And I said, what's wrong? He said, you know, you came over here, you stopped by and that stuff's like that. You could have moved that stuff to the pile. I said, if you hadn't paid somebody to do it, I would have. I said, but when you tell me you pay somebody to do it, he's paid to do it. That's what he got paid to do. He can do it. I said, and if you would have actually asked me, I would have never said no. I said, but from where I was sitting and he said, well, I said, well, I'll tell you what, obviously you're upset about it. I don't agree with what you're saying. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go home. You know, I'm going to think about it. You think about it, but I'll be back tomorrow to check on you. And we got on, we got past that. That's the only time in my entire life where we were at odds with each other. Uh, but I would never handle him wrong. He's the man who reared me. He's the man who stepped into the role that my dad never stepped into. And so that's the way I look at it. Uh, what bothers me is you can look at how people are responding to this and see the issues that they have. You see the ones who have issues with their parents. You see the ones who have issues with their children. And you see how they are reading into it and how easily it is for them to take sides. It's not easy for me to take sides because I don't know the truth. Uh, I just know that in that business, when you're putting somebody on, you're laying, you're, you're lining and lacing pockets. You're, you're investing in things to do a movie. You put money into it. Uh, I don't know the current situation. I don't know how, how P is doing. I'm not one of those people that's constantly checking somebody's net worth. I'm too busy trying to get mine right. But what I can tell you is that I hope they work it out. I hope that they get things straightened out. I hope that things uh, find a way to mend themselves. Life is short. Family is way too important, especially uh, parents and children. Um, again, it's difficult parenting adults because they're quick to tell you they're grown. Uh, how many times I hear, you know, I'm grown, right? You know, I'm adult, right? But then here you come. Hey, you know what? Hey but you were grown and I, I'm not going to leave you out there. I'm not going to let you, let you, I'm not, I'm not, not going to let you go down, but keep in mind the next time I'm trying to put something in your ear that you may not know everything that I may know a little bit more than you. I may be able to help you get through some things. I may be able to give you a sense of direction again, you know, uh, I don't know exactly what he's saying uh, his dad owes him. Now, if he, is, he if he does owe him, he hasn't paid him, he needs to straighten that out. I don't know how or what it takes, uh, but I can tell you that as a parent, I felt P's pain when I heard that video. I, uh, now, again, there are two different sides. P said he called and he won't return his call. Romeo saying, you know, we've actually had a talk behind closed doors. So again, you can't, uh, with certainty, you, you can do it based off of how you feel about one person or the other. But there are a lot of people also, if we're going to be honest, 
that for whatever reason wants P to be wrong. Uh, P is that one cat that I always held people down and, and that's another thing that Romeo has a problem with. And I think that's the bigger issue. Uh, P's held everybody down. You know, P is the one that rescued Snoop from uh, death row. Uh, you know, Mac-10. Uh, uh, you know, he's the one that put him, no, I think Mac-10 went to cash money. I could be, I could be wrong. But I know he held Stoop down. He pulled some other people in. He showed them the business and he didn't lock them in to where they couldn't do their own thing. He showed them the business, taught them how to do their own thing. And they went out and they, they were successful with the blueprint he gave them. Uh, Romeo says he's doing all this stuff in the community, but he has his kids that he's not, you know, not responding to or not being there for. Uh, and there's a lot of pain there. The one thing I can tell you is that Romeo is hurting. Why he's hurting may not be why he's what he's saying. What he's saying is the thing that he can use to strike out at and, you know, uh, hurt his dad with. This is about, hey, you hurt me. I'm hurting. I'm going to hurt you. And that's not what we want to be as as a family. That's not what we want to be as a race. Uh, there's obviously a lot of work to be done. So I'm hoping that they get it worked out. So that's my take on it. Um, it's not just them. It's a microcosm of an issue that's going on in our community. Um, it's just a different time. And kids don't have the respect that they used to have. We used to have a respect for our parents. And, and don't get me wrong. I'm not one of those people that think that parents can't be wrong. I definitely can be wrong. And my kids are allowed to come to me and tell me when they think I'm wrong, as long as they do it respectfully. Um, you know, I'm not my grandparents because I said so and you don't have a right to challenge me. I want you to tell me what bothers you. I want you to tell me if you're not feeling love. I want you to tell me if you feel like you don't have access to me. I want you to tell me in what ways you feel I failed you so that I can make amends for it. I'm not perfect. I'm every day I'm waking up and I'm trying to be better. I'm still parenting my 37 year old daughter who happens to be the closest to me uh, because, you know, she I was a teenager when she came along. And so, you know, we kind of grew up together and she has seen my energy and my effort towards every last one of my kids because she's watched it all. And she has an appreciation for me that really makes me feel good. And of course, my baby girl, she's eight, she, you know, daddy, everything rises and sun, sets in me. The teenagers are like, dude, give me some space. But the ones in between, you know, love me one minute, do give me some space the next minute. And I'm good with all that. You know, I'm not trying to run your life. I'm just trying to make sure you have one. So on that note, look, man, that's what it is. Um, if you're watching this video, uh, you've seen the preemptive uh, intro to this video. Uh, you know that we're in the middle of a fundraiser. Look, go to the description box and click the link and donate we are going to have to make a difference um in what's going on in our communities and the odyssey project has done that in so many different ways if you follow me you know i've been doing this for years so on that note i'm gonna get ready to get off of here you guys thanks for stopping in you have an unbelievable and awesome awesome remainder of your day I'm out. <laughs>
Thank you.